What's going on guys? It's your boy Scrub here and back again with another video. Hope you guys are having a great day. I know I am. And today I've got two story times for y'all I think you guys are going to enjoy. They're a little bit more intense and scary than usual, but uh, it's been a little bit since I've done one of these. So I figured why not. Before we get into it though, if you think you're going to enjoy it, press the like button and uh, yeah, without further ado, let's go. Alright, so this story time was sent in to me by someone who's older now, but at the time this takes place was like that age where you can drive a car but only under parental supervision getting your hours. At least here in America, at like 15 and a half, you get this thing called a learner's permit. I know my state did, the person who sent this to me, their state did too, apparently. And you have to drive for like X amount of hours to qualify to take your driver's test at 16. And uh, during those hours, you have to have a parent in the car or an adult, which makes sense, you know, get some experience, but some experience under supervision. Regardless, this person was driving with their parent. And when you're driving with your parent, it's not like this person would have driven super irresponsibly, but you're driving extra, extra safe with your parents in the car. Not that you're driving recklessly, but like when your parents are in the car, and especially when you're learning, you're not going over the speed limit. You're not trying to slam on your brakes. You're not trying to like do a whole lot of maneuvers. You're trying to follow the rules as closely as you can. And you probably should follow the rules as closely as you can all the time. You guys just know what I'm saying. It's like when you're talking to your friends, you talk differently than you would talk to your mom and dad. At least I do. Like, the jokes I would say to my friends are not the jokes I would say to my mom, bro. She'd probably think there's something wrong with me. Ryan, why do you just keep screaming the letter E to everything I say? And it's like, mom, you just don't get it, all right? You don't understand me. Either way, this person was cruising and their parent told them that they had to turn right up ahead. And so they look behind them, they don't really see a car, and so they change lanes. And they had just forgotten to put on their turn signal. And listen, this is annoying if you're behind them, but like, whatever, they're a new driver. And at least in Las Vegas, people don't use their turn signal all the time. Like, that's pretty common. I've just kind of gotten used to people doing it. Not that it's okay, I don't do it myself. But if I saw someone do it, I'd be like, ah, alright, I guess that's just what's going down. But for whatever reason, the person behind them, who was not close enough to have been cut off, starts just laying on the horn. And they had come up a little bit faster than they had expected. They didn't realize how fast they were going. But, like, it wasn't intentionally getting in their way. They had to turn up ahead, and there was really nothing that he could have done. And the person was clearly going faster than they should have been. Like, sure, in retrospect, could they have put on the turn signal and done it differently? Yes. But they're a new driver, and, like, what are you gonna do? But this person is just laying on the horn, and they try to do a wave out the back window, like an apologetic gesture, you know, the little hand up in the window. Which I thought was the universal signal for, like, my bad. And I don't know if the person just was so angry that they thought the wave was a middle finger, or if they were really just this angry for no reason. But they start laying on the horn even harder, and they're looking in the rear view, and they're, like, flipping them off and yelling and, like, punching the steering wheel. They're pissed, and so his parent is like, all right, well, this dude seems to have a problem, so when we turn right, he'll probably just keep driving and we'll be good. So they turn right onto a street with a slower speed limit. It goes from like a, a 45 to like a 35 type of street, and this guy turns with them, and he's still just laying on the horn, like, er, 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 er. And now even the parent is starting to get a little bit nervous. They're like, what is this guy's problem? Is he following us? And listen, I'm not saying I've never gotten mad at someone on the road, but like road rage in and of itself is scary. All you should do when it comes to road rage is go, that guy sucks, that guy's a jerk, and that should be the end of it. 100% has someone cut me off and I've been like, ah, oh, screw that guy, for sure. But you should never start following someone and like, you get one honk, you get one rage honk. You can't be following someone for nine minutes blaring on the horn, because at that point you are more annoying than the person you're honking at. Either way, they're following them, honking the horn, and uh, it just so happens that the road they're on comes to, like, a four-way stop. And so they come to a stop pretty slowly, because they're still learning how to drive, and when they stop, the car behind them that's been laying on the horn comes around and, like, jumps in front of them. Obviously, cars can't jump, but you know what I'm saying, like, comes in at an angle to kind of, like, block them in at this four-way stop. And at that point, the person driving is like, I don't know what to do. And their parent says, just get ready to hit the gas if I tell you to. And they see this dude get out of the car. 
and he is red in the face with anger. He is just so pissed off. You can see it in like the, the tomato shade of red he's got all over his face. And he's just yelling and they can only hear that he's yelling like they can't hear what he's yelling in the car. But whatever he's yelling, he's so angry that like spit is flying out of his mouth, bro. If they were outside, they would have had to uh, signed a waiver to be in the splash zone. Like that is how much this guy is just angry. And so uh, the dad who's driving with them says, throw it into reverse, angle it and get out of here. So they throw it into reverse, they angle it and they get out of there. And as they're getting out of there, the guy like leans over and kicks the car. And so they start driving and the dad's like, just keep driving. It's okay. It's okay. It's fine. But they look in the rear view and they see that guy running back to his car, getting in his car and driving to like catch up with them. And so at this point, the dad's like, okay, this isn't good because the guy's tailgating them and he's still mad. And they just want to get away from him. They're not trying to get into a chase. They're not trying to do anything. They're trying to just go the speed limit. But when they're going the speed limit, he's like so on them that if they touch the brakes at all, it's going to cause an accident. And so the dad decides to like call his friend at that point who was a police officer. I don't know why he wouldn't just call the cops. I feel like at this point, you're more than uh, justified to call the cops when they're following you and like trying to block you in and get out of the car and charge you. And he says, just drive to my house. So they start driving to his house, which thankfully is pretty close. And the entire time, this guy's just following them, getting more and more pissed off. And at every stop sign, every stoplight, he's like getting out of the car. And at one stoplight, it's a pretty long one. And he just gets up to the driver's side window and just starts banging on the window saying like, I'm going to beat you, blah, 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 blah. Keep in mind, this guy has been so mad that he's still following them. And if he's at the window yelling at them, he can see that it's not like some grown man. Even if it was a 65 year old, I don't think it's ever okay to act like this. But you know what I'm saying? Like you just go to the car window it's someone who's very clearly learning how to drive, like obviously young. No, I better continue my rampage. Anyways, they're driving with this crazy dude following them, and finally they turn on to his dad's friend street, and it's a cul-de-sac, and the kid's like, oh, we're screwed. Awesome. Not only did we go to this place, because he doesn't see his dad's friend outside, where there's no help, but on top of it, it's a cul-de-sac, so there's really no way to run. And so they get to the end of the cul-de-sac, they start turning around, the guy blocks them in, as you would expect, kind of parked sideways in the street gets out and starts like menacingly walking towards the car with what appears to be a tire iron in his hand and uh listen all i'm saying is that if somebody is chasing you for an extended period of time and then they finally corner you and they start walking towards you with a big metal object it's probably all right to just slam the gas and hope for the best you know i'm not saying i would usually advocate for that but clearly this person is going to try to attack you and he's walking towards them all menacingly kind of swinging the tire iron back and forth and all of a sudden there's a red and blue flash and they look over and it's his dad's friend in his driveway with his squad car that he had had at his house and he's turned on the lights and is over the intercom saying like step away from the car and as soon as that happens it's like the entire vibe shifts the guy goes from confident tire iron samurai to instantly fearful and just starts running off into the woods behind this little like cul-de-sac development was a lot of woods and then there was a main road and then some more woods so the guy just takes off into the woods and everybody's just kind of watching him leave a little bit relieved because you know not trying to attack anyone with a tire iron anymore but also a little scary because he's just out of there but whatever they then realize that like he left his car which is definitely a pretty bizarre move i don't know i feel like if it's your car it's pretty easy to track it back to you who tried to attack you with a tire iron after leading you on a high speed chase oh i don't know all we have is his car registered to his address with his name i guess we'll go pay him a visit obviously the cop thought this was weird so he calls a, a couple of people that are actually working they come over they start looking through it blah 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 they don't really find a whole lot but what they do realize when they run the vin number and the tags is that this car had been stolen so whoever had been chasing them hopped out with a tire iron ready to like start swinging on them had not been the owner of the car which i don't know if that's more or less scary like on one hand at least people that are supposed to to be driving cars still aren't like this on the other hand bruh stole a car and decided to go road rage that's how you know you actually have a road
road rage issue. Like, you know you have anger problems. If you're in a stolen car and you can't help but start road raging, you do know what happens if the police come. You're already going to be in trouble for the road rage they respond to, and you think they're just going to be cool with you having a stolen car too? Listen, I know you punched the school bus full of nuns in the face repeatedly, but, but, but. We're only gonna charge you for that. We'll let the stolen car slide. At that point, though, they were kind of like, you guys can leave. We're gonna have to look into this a little bit more. And uh, they were fine with that. The kid was ready to go home. That's one hell of a driving lesson, you know? Not necessarily one I would want. You're trying to learn how to drive a car. Okay, change lanes, take a right. You try to take the right, there's just some psychopath in a stolen car trying to run you off the road and smack you with a tire iron. He said he was a little afraid to keep driving for a bit after that, and honestly, I can't really say I blame him. He eventually got over it. Like, obviously, being afraid of driving is one of those things you probably just gotta get over if you live in the USA. We don't really have a public transport system, so if you can't drive a car, chances are life's not going to be the most fun version it possibly could be. Unless you live in a major city. I know like some major cities have it, but at least where I live, if you didn't have a car, walking places in 120 degrees doesn't sound too fun. But uh, they eventually got over it. But what is scary is they never found out who did it. Like they never caught the guy. Had just decided to go for a joyride with absolutely no joy. That was one of the rules written on the car. You know, he stole it. He's like, I'm going to joyride it. But the most angry version possible. Absolutely terrifying though. I've been seeing like a lot more crazy road rage stories whether it be on the news or just like in general. I don't know if people have always just been this crazy and they're less afraid to hide it now or what, but it's definitely starting to feel like people out there are a lot more quick to start following you and trying to beat you with a tire iron. Which is not the greatest thing for society, you know? I'm not saying it's like something I'm worried about on a daily basis, but I feel like I'm hearing about this stuff quite a bit more. This did take place a while ago, though, so I guess I, I can't really count this one in that. But always be vigilant when you're out there driving, alright? And just try to be nice to everyone on the road. Yes, some people suck. It doesn't mean you should suck, too. Mainly because you never know when there's a psychopath that's gonna try to beat you with a tire iron. So if you're just nice when you're driving, you'll probably avoid it forever. All right, this next one was uh, pretty scary as well. So this person sent this in to me. They're all okay. Everything's fine. They sent this in to me to tell it. Basically, one day they were coming home from grocery shopping with their roommate, and they're uh, renting a house in a pretty good neighborhood, not a whole lot of break-ins or anything like that, and they pull back in. And one of the first things that they notice is that their front window, like right next to their front door, had been broken into. Like the glass is all gone, there's very obviously a hole where the window once was, and immediately they decide that they're going to go in and look. Which, listen, I'm not trying to tell anyone what to do, I'm not saying I'm an expert here, I'm just saying if you get home and there's like a broken window on your house, I wouldn't recommend just going in and looking. You know your house was broken into, you know you're gonna call the authorities anyways, just wait for them to show up, cause who knows if they're still sitting in the house or something. Anyways, they go in and they start looking around and the house is just completely trashed. Everything's flipped over, everything's all over the place. It looks like someone literally came in and then like Aang from Avatar The Last Airbender used their airbending talent to summon a tornado just to the perfect strength to ruin everything. Flipping everything over, you know, just like throwing things everywhere. And so they start looking through their entire house being like, all right, what's missing? And they're really confused because in the living room, they're like, okay, nothing's missing. TV is still there. They're looking through the mess and nothing is gone. Not that there was a whole ton of valuables in the kitchen and the living room, but everything's thrown all over the place. And they're like, well, it sucks. They would just throw everything all over the place and not take anything. I know that sounds weird, but they're almost a little bit insulted that they didn't get their stuff taken. So they decide to go to their bedrooms where they definitely had valuable stuff. I'm talking gaming PCs, microphones, the works, like if, if you were a burglar, you would have just cleared out their bedroom. But they go in, same thing, everything's trashed, one of their uh, PCs has the tempered glass side panel destroyed, like things are not in very good shape, but everything is there. 
and they're kind of like, well, that's really weird. Someone broke into our house to trash everything but steal nothing. And at that point, they decide to call the authorities, and so they're waiting outside, and they're talking back and forth, and they're like, all right, well, who would want to trash our house? Like, who hates us? And they can't think of anyone. Both of them actually weren't from this town. They were from a town like four states away. And they had just moved here a couple months ago. So unless someone had hated them to the point where they drove multiple states over just to break into their house, rummage through all their crap but not steal anything and leave, that's unlikely. But the one thing that they're thinking is like maybe the guy who rented the house before had beef with someone or something. But still, they were thinking it was weird that nothing was taken. Because even if you're looking for someone that doesn't live any there anymore, sorry, you'd think once you smash the window and get in, you'd at least take something. Like, I'm not saying you should ever break into anyone's house. But if someone's going to go through the trouble of breaking into a house, you'd think they'd take things. And they're sitting outside talking amongst themselves, not really understanding why things went down the way they went down. When uh, the uh, authorities show up and they're like, all right, what happened? And so they tell them, we came home, we see that our window was smashed, we instantly knew someone had broken in, so we go in and we start looking around and nothing is missing. And the cops look equally confused, like, are you guys sure that nothing's missing? Which is probably a dumb question, but I understand why they asked it. Like, are you sure nothing's missing? Is something missing because, or is nothing missing because you guys had something illegal stolen? Or like, why is nothing missing? And they're saying, no, like the house is trashed. Whoever had broken in very clearly had a great time destroying everything, but nothing's gone. And so the cops go in and they clear the house and they're looking at everything and they're like, nothing's missing. And they're like, no, we would tell you if nothing's missing. And so they're confused. They don't really know what to do. And so they're like, well, I just wouldn't stay here until you can get that window fixed because you never know if the person's going to come back because they didn't steal anything or whatever. But we don't really know what to do because like, I mean, if you don't know what the suspect looks like or who the suspect is, you can't really put like a, a alert out to pawn shops to be looking for anything because nothing was taken. Like, there's really nothing you can do. So they decide that they're going to get a hotel for a couple days while the window is getting fixed. And they start deciding to look through their ring doorbell footage, which they should have done earlier. But they start looking, and what's really bizarre is that even though the front window had been broken, they have no footage of anyone going through, like, by the front door. And there was a way to get into the window from that side without being on the doorbell camera, but you must have known what the angle of the doorbell camera was, if that makes sense. Like, there was a way to do it, but once they realized that no one was on the camera breaking the window, they were like, it has to be somebody that's either lived in the house before or is aware of the doorbell camera and how it works. Because the way that they threw the, the brick or the rock through the window to break it, and the way that they went in was in a way where the doorbell camera couldn't see them, which made the entire thing creepier. Like, okay, the person who used to live there before was desperate. They broke in to rob the new owners. Not good, but like, okay, at least you know what happened. The idea of someone who used to live there just breaking in, trashing everything, and not taking anything is even scarier. Because, like, this crazy unhinged person just feels the need to destroy the stuff of whoever's living there right now but doesn't want to take anything. That's like a crime show bad guy, all right? That's not your run-of-the-mill bad guy burglar. That's like someone who's psychotic bent on revenge because you decided to rent the house they used to live in. After that, though, obviously, they took security a lot more seriously. They ended up putting a camera at the angle where the person, like, threw the rock from, just so that way it wouldn't be able to be done again. And what's really scary is after that, it didn't happen again. Which means whoever did it literally had to have known the setup of the camera, seen the second one, and go, oh, this won't work now. Because otherwise, they probably would have just done it again. I mean, let's be honest, they had a pretty good way of doing things. Just keep breaking in until you find something. It's like in Call of Duty Zombies when you just keep hitting the mystery box over and over and over again until you hit the ray gun. Only difference is now it's a guaranteed teddy bear instead, so you're just going to avoid it. Overall, I think the scariest part of this is that nothing was taken. Like, I don't really know what they could have been looking for, but the fact it was someone who knew the house, knew the security system, and then broke in, destroyed the house, and took nothing... I'd probably have to move. I'm going to be honest. Like, I'm just not trying to get caught up in some psychopath revenge story with the landlord. I'm good. You guys have fun with that. I'll just move somewhere else. Seriously, it's okay. 
anyways guys I think that's gonna do it for the video hopefully you enjoyed I know these two were a little bit shorter than normal but I thought it would be a good video nonetheless so if you did enjoy it I'd really appreciate y'all taking a second to press the like button let me know what you thought in the comment section down below if you don't know what to comment go ahead and comment the word break in down below it just helps the video do better I'd greatly appreciate it Beyond that, if you like listening to the story times, but you'd prefer to listen in audio only format, I do post these on Spotify, link down below to that if you want to check it out. Or if you want to listen to multiple story times in a row without having to like click the next one, I did make a playlist here on YouTube, link also in the description. And uh, you can use that if you're doing chores, homework, whatever it may be, feel free to just turn that on and give it a listen. And uh, yeah, on that note, guys, I think that's everything I got to plug. Thank you so much for watching. Don't get anyone pregnant. If you do, make sure they're hot. And I'll see you guys next time. I'm out. Peace.